Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2. In this episode we're going to be taking care of our Duna missions arriving at Duna and this is going to be a special challenge for me because I don't actually remember what they look like. It's been a while and I have to figure out what I was planning to do with them. I'll remember easily enough, don't worry. But uh, yeah, I, I, there's always little things that I might, might forget along the way. We'll see how that works. So let's start off with Duna Colony 1. I won't use Curve Alarm Clock to switch to it. I'll just switch to it here for safety's sake. Um, Duna Colony 2 is uh, not on the list and it's orbiting Kerbin. Let me just quickly check up on that to refresh my memory of why that's the case. Okay, well it's, it's sort of here. And we've got communication. We've got fuel to transfer to Duna. Yep, it's turning to prograde. Doesn't have a whole lot of solar panelry. It's got material kits. I think it was supposed to transfer those material kits. Hmm. So I wonder what went wrong here. Oh, I think, oh, it doesn't have a long-range communication antenna, I think. That's the problem. It, it really doesn't have any way of communicating long-range. In fact, it doesn't have any antennae at all. Uh, we probably should have put some antennae on. I forgot about that. Okay, well, let's get Curve Alarm Clock up. I need to get the next transfer window to Duna up here. And that will allow us to get that mission done. Well, it's a year and 309 days, so we don't have to do this too quickly. But maybe I should, like, create an alarm for this thing. Um, raw alarm time. Let's say after after about 50 days of somebody come up and take care of this. We'll get some stuff done in the meantime. Okay, so hopefully I'll remember that. Right, well, on to the actual missions arriving at Duna. Okay, well, this is rather interesting and fancy. Uh, so we're going to arrow break at uh, Duna with the heat shield. We're going to use the orange to set this down. And uh, we don't have the material kits to inflate the modules. That's what that uh, colony mission 2 was for. Uh, we would like to get into orbit around Duna prior to actually having to land. We don't want to do it directly because we need to scan the planet before actually landing this so we landed at a good location. Anyway, uh, we have to time warp through three days and then we'll enter and then we have a dummy node there which I can get rid of now and uh, we'll aim for it. Do I have trajectories in here? Probably not. Probably... no. No I don't. Well that would have been helpful but uh, we'll make do anyway. Let's review our uh, contracts here. Of course, we don't have a contract to build a base on Duna. We just have the Orbital Survey of Duna and Orbital Survey of Ike, and that should be the Duna Pro, uh, Duna Colony 00 that's coming in last. Uh, that needs to do that. And so we want to do those surveys so that we know where to land this as well. So that's why this has to wait in, in orbit. This definitely does need to capture otherwise it's doomed we don't have a whole lot of fuel actually I wish I had done more capture tests because I'm going to be so confused between Duna and Mars I know the altitudes for Mars but obviously that's not right for Duna Mars would be 50 kilometers Duna last time I checked it was around 24 but I'm not sure I'm gonna F5 here I think that's for, probably for the best. We don't want to have to redo this just because I'm not sure of the numbers. Let's retract all. Well, we could leave them out for a little bit. Well, that's good enough. Alright, let's get in close and see what happens. We are heading in retrograde, but I don't feel like there's a particular need to fix that. We are just trying to land it after all, not rendezvous with anything. Don't know how well the antennae will survive here. We'll need them out. Otherwise we can't control things. Okay, we have at entered the atmosphere of Duna. 
still speeding up rather than slowing down here. Now we're slowing down. Mm, very convincing, actually. Come on, oh, we lost the Communitron. I didn't even know where the Communitron was. Okay, he chilled. Oh! Oh, we lost both of our antennae. Shucks. And now it's out of control. Well, that was a bad design choice on my part. I don't think there's any particular way to save that. It looks like it'll survive overall, but it's not going to have any... any way to save itself. Yeah, it, it got captured. 24 was a uh, good altitude, it looks like. Oh, well, unless it actually brings it all the way down, in which case it was too deep. We're going up, but we need to go up faster. And at this rate, it's going to come into the atmosphere again and get destroyed. Because we're not going to have any communication. Well, this was an ambitious mission. Landing, uh, except for the heat shield, I don't know how much it is, but we've got 16 point... 8 one tons here. 200. Will it go suborbital? It might still. Maybe something like 26 kilometers would have been better. But obviously, if our antennae are going to snap off, that's not going to work out for us. Yep, broken. Well, that was a bad idea. Well,. There you go, ambitious mission. At least it wasn't uh, critical to the contracts, that's one right side. And this is the first flyby of Duna, by the way, so it's not like we have a lot of ex I mean, of course, in general I have a lot of experience, but not in this particular save, we haven't done it a lot. This is actually the first time we sent anything over to Duna. We might have been over-ambitious with this particular project. Probably should have put some better communication infrastructure first, and maybe use less breakable antennae. Okay, well, we're going rather fast for anything to work out for us here. Still have no communication, so like, obviously staging isn't happening. Going 200 meters per second into the ground. Okay, yeah, um, instant destruction. Well, this, this wouldn't have been the first Duna mission ever. Well, in this save it is, uh, to fail on Duna, but uh, in general, not the first Duna mission ever to fail. So, alright, um, let's go to the next one and hope we have better uh, better antenna arrangement there. Otherwise, we might be in trouble there as well. Ah, well, this has a higher probability of success since we actually aren't going to enter the atmosphere with this. This is a full orange rather than the small orange that we had in the last mission. And this is clearly meant to get us into orbit without error breaking. So that is good. That means our antenna, antennae will not break off. So uh, let's see if I can do this one right since it's at least set up better. Okay, we're in Duna SOI, turning around, and uh, this time we'll try 26 kilometers. Oh no, oh, right, right, we don't need to go suborbital, we don't need to go suborbital. Let's just get to 100 kilometers. I mean, when I said suborbital, I meant in the atmosphere. We don't need to go into the atmosphere, we're just doing a power air break, but we would like to get as close to Duna as possible, uh, for efficiency's sake the Oberth effect, which means that the faster you go, the more influence you have over your orbit, let's put it that way. 
at least in the prograde and retrograde direction. It is not true, it's the opposite situation for inclination. I guess you could sort of view it as a trade-off. Okay, so let's see how well we capture here. Well, it's a good thing uh, we're doing it this way, because this is the reactor. This is the power distribution unit. So, yeah, very important. We probably don't want to nuke Duna right away. Not that that would happen with the nuclear reactor, that's not how they work, but still, I mean, you know. In principle, you don't want to start off by sending nuclear material all over the place. Looks like we'll maintain communication throughout this burn. That's good, very important. Alright, we've captured and we are in a reasonably low orbit. I want to come around one more time and bring it down further. I would like an equatorial location for our base on Duna anyway. We have 566 meters per second here and since we saw that uh, our speed coming down was ultimately around 200, that's still enough. We've got drogue shoots as well. Okay, very good. 440 meters per second left. We will have to use some of that to deorbit of course. And uh, I don't an anticipate too much heating, but I wonder about the antennae in the atmosphere. I wonder if they'll survive. Oh, that's a good question. But maybe we should get the Duna Colony Zero Zero mission here and it might be able to give some communication support in case we need to use... Well, the Commutron 16s also break off, so um, the internal comms of the probe cores, something like that. We'll have to be careful. Oh, near future. Oh, near future uh, seems to recognize the nuclear reactor. Or, I think that's what that is, NF. Hmm. This is all very interesting. Core status and everything. Active, non-active. Well, let's leave it not active. Okay, well, yeah, let's bring our scanner in finally and do the scannings. Ah, well, I did totally forget about the sheer scale of this guy. Um, yeah, this is the oversized signal intelligence satellite. Uh, this is actually the probe part, right? Uh, there's, there's the Terrier engine right there. Yeah, I forgot about this. And this is a great view, by the way. You can see that's Duna and Ike right there. And that's Jewel. You can see on the map. Um, there's Jewel, there's Duna. Basically, we're looking at it at uh, this angle right here. With uh, Duna over here and Jewel over there, except it disappears. So that's that's quite a shot, actually. Um, in fact, that's good enough for, like, screenshotting. Yep. Just interesting. I mean... Yeah, this is big. So this should be able to communicate back to uh, Kerbin just fine. And it does have a uh, little other antennae, though those aren't really... Uh, I keep forgetting how how it works on uh, the stock antennae. It's not like remote tech where these guys would be the relays and that will be um, heading, uh, you know, the connection back home. Uh, this is different. But anyway... So we have the scanner here. We might as well get the scanner out, make sure that the infernal robotics attached to it is working right. And we have onboard fuel in order to do the do the capture. So let's deploy the scanner. Sun has no surface to scan. No, no problems. And we've got plenty of science. We've got a pack of goo containers. We've got a science junior. It is very good. And we've got other experiments here. Let me just uh, toggle them. Get them started. Sure. Okay, but let's head into the SOI of Duna. We are clearly not quite in there right now. And uh, see what happens. We really need to bring our... Oh, maybe I should have done that earlier. Our periapsis is... Well, we do want a scanning altitude, though. Hmm. But we should probably be a little bit closer than this. 
I figure we need at least to be below 500 kilometers. Well, uh, our inclination is going bad. Well, that's fine. All right, we will we'll approach like that. Okay. Well, let's just uh, check when our scanner is happy with the situation. Um, form oral survey. Okay, well, we have to be in orbit. It says 1,500 kilometers, so it should be fine. But we also need fuel to transfer to Ike afterwards. I swear, uh, this dish is just like a large, it's a significant body around uh, Duna. It could provide a pretty big eclipse if it wanted to, I think. How about our other instruments? Analyze data. Well, it says ScanSat altitude ideal for that one. Uh, we're doing high over Duna radio plasma wave scan. We can transmit that. Ooh, took a chunk out of the electric charge though. Our solar panels are not oriented properly right now. I mean, we've never flown by Duna before, so all the goo is new. It's all new goo. Observe mystery goo. Uh, maybe... well, no, I think we should be able to transmit. Yeah. Do we have the small instruments as well? Oh, we've got one of these multispectral. Well, we really pack things in. That'll take some time. Orbital telescope. That's 30. Yeah, the big antenna is blocking the sun right now. Got one of these imaging platforms. Scan side altitude is ideal. Okay, high over Duna. Our electric charge is really going down right now. I think because of all the scanning going on. Which one is really consuming the most? Let me... Hmm. One of these is really using up a lot of juice. I think it's this one. Uh, it uses one unit. That's a lot, but it's not all of it. Anyway, let's capture. We've got we've got a good orbit right now. Let me turn around so that we get some sunlight. Point at Duna. Okay. Uh, radial down, maybe that's the right way. It might be that we only can. Oh no, we're recharging fine now. Okay, cool. Um. It's not quite the... well, I mean, as long as we, we are recharging, it should be alright. So let's have... oh, I don't have persistent rotation in here. See, now I've gotten used to having persistent rotation. Oh, there it is, there it is. But it doesn't like to show that window. Okay, uh, turn that off. SAS on. Relative rotation. Sun. Set. Sun. Okay. Hopefully you'll keep that. Let's see. Okay, we've got plenty of electric charge now. Let's extend the magnetometer. And 
and transmit that data. Just in case something goes wrong, maybe I should just do the Science Junior here. Let's perform all. Material study, uh, 61.3. Transmit that. Reset those. Let's get that one again, start multispectral scan. It'll still probably go dark on the nighttime side, of course. Scan for resource loads, that's different. Just perform oral survey. Okay, that's done. So now we will know where to land our mission. Hopefully. And this we can transmit as well. Multispectral analysis. Oh, very close to running out of power there. Lumina. Let's have a higher cutoff. Oh, it's mostly dirt. Let's just focus on ore here. Seems like a good spot of stuff all around here. Not much water there though. Plenty at the poles as you would expect. But we don't have our mission at the pole right now. Um, the spots with ore aren't exactly the spots with water. It's a spot there and a spot there and then the ore is sort of missing that. But maybe around here would be a good target. Yeah, it definitely looks like Places with ore are not places with water. But that's uh, somewhere on the interface between this blob and the water blob. Probably would be a good deal. I don't know though. The cutoff. There's still some even with a high cutoff. That's a good sign. Gypsum's around. Exotic minerals are around. Dirt. Dirt's actually suspiciously not all over the place, even though it's a high fraction. It's over here. A lot, a lot of no dirt, actually. Hydrates all over the place. Weird, since hydrates sort of implies water, and it's not where the water is. Carbonite. Carbonite is there. There's not much carbonite on Duna. We're going to have to do ore stuff. Carbonite's not an option. There's a little bit of carbonite there, but it really is not an option here. Good thing we brought the, the nuclear reactor and not the carbonite electric generator. Okay. Well, let's set it to the water because that's the best uh, indicator of things. We want to be right around here-ish to land the colony. Scan for resource loads is different apparently. Hmm. Well, I'll go to Apoapsis and bring down the Periapsis uh, to where we can scan for resource loads so we can see what that's all about. Right there would be good enough. I don't want to bring it too far down because that complicates attempted transfers to Ike, which we want to do. Orbital telescope. Oh, we have to get low over uh, Duna to do the orbital telescope. Then we'll finally fulfill that contract. So I guess we'll have to bring our periapsis even lower than this. But first, let's see what the orbital load, I mean, the uh, resource load data is. New resource load has been discovered and added to your map. Oh, resource load at Duna. Hmm. Well, that's something new. Okay, well, our current mission can't deal with that, but we're going to be making our base over here. Maybe a secondary base there could be a thing. Okay. Right. So, let's get uh, a little bit lower to do the orbital telescope, and also probably a low Verduna goo container.
Let's see, um, let's set Ike as a target. We should be able to like hit Ike there at some point. Well, if that's not low, uh, it'll be in the atmosphere if it's any lower than that. I don't know, probably on this round we can't meet Ike. Oh, I'll take it back. It's not the best approach to Ike, though. 700 kilometers. Let's see, what does that actually look like? I mean, we haven't really finished the scanning here at Duna. And now that we're here, we might as well do things properly. ScanSat shows these sort of belts here, but we could easily scan the whole surface. You don't need to do it halfway. So yeah, we'll wait until all the scanning here at Duna is done before actually making that transfer. Okay, let's finish the Duna contract though. Still, it should be relatively easy to transfer out to Ike. Are we low yet? Yes, we are. In space near Duna. Oh, uh, we didn't have SAS still on. Shoot. That messed up the whole persistent rotation thing. While we're low over Duna, though, we are also on the nighttime side. Is that right? Yeah, looks like it. So we're not going to get recharged right now. Collect radio data. Just wow, that's 175. Well, it is a big thing that we're carrying here. But let's keep that experiment for now and get back to it later because I'm worried it'll take too much electric charge. Observe mystery goo. This one we can transmit. And log visual observations. Transmit. And there we go. Contract is complete. So it'll be Ike next, but we still have the opportunity to get a lot more science from here. What I want to do is collect that science and store it. So log that. Oh, that's not new. That is. Keep that because we will transmit it on the flip side. Log imaging data. Keep that when we have some electric charge. Okay, let's go around. And I forgot to do the signal intelligence data from high, so we should do that as well. I sure hope we recharge. Uh-oh. Do we have like just the right spin to not be recharging? Oh, nuts. Yeah, I think our solar panels are pretty definitively blocked here. I mean, eventually the seasons will roll around such that I guess we'll get some power. But it looks like, is there any point where we actually get power? No. Well, we're going to have to wait a while before this uh, mission can continue its work. Valuable work. It's uh, quite lucrative. Lots of science and possibility of contract fulfillment, but we're in a pickle right now. Does Mechjeb care? Yeah, it looks like Mechjeb does care. It is electric charge after all. It's not the same as pure lack of communication. Hmm. Right. Okay, well, let's land that reactor. Since we've picked a spot, this will be safe here. We just need to remember to come back to it. I'll add an alarm because otherwise I tend to forget things. 
uh, let's say 30 days. Hmm. There's that thing to deal with too at about the same time, so perhaps I'll remember both of them at the same time. Okay. Okay, well, it's a good thing that the reactor sort of supply, well, potentially can supply its own power, because the place that we want to land at is not exactly well lit right now. We sort of want to land here-ish. And yeah, that's a little bit iffy. But, let's see now, um, let's say landing guidance, I, I want to pick a landing spot, pick target on map, right around there, right? Yeah, there's water, sort of ore there, maybe a little bit further, yeah. Okay, so now we have our target, and let's just make sure everything goes well. Okay, we'll have our initial descent burn here. So we skim through the atmosphere instead of like coming down suddenly. I don't know exactly what would be best. That's pretty equatorial, everything's fine as far as inclination goes, but what periapsis would let me hit that properly? That's the question. And of course trajectories would have helped with that, but I don't have it. So, let's just go with what we've got. I'll say 26 kilometers here. If we overshoot that a bit, we'll land on ore territory. Maybe 24-ish. Okay, we really don't need the specifics. Well, I guess show landing predictions. Well, right now, uh, landing guidance says we'll land over here instead. But we've got parachutes too, so it might not know that. Okay, we've got plenty of internal electric charge. I'm gonna retract all the solar panels. Uh, that doesn't extend these landing legs. Deploy. I'm going to have this out so that I can decouple it quickly. And the main antennae are on there, but who knows how long that'll last. So, camera orientation, good. Here we go. Sometime or another we'll have to land in this chasm thing. I don't know if it's colored right though, honestly. That looks rather jagged and not correct, doesn't it? Seems like there's something wrong there. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. Let's rotate. Oh, that's too much rotation. It's definitely pulling in our landing location as we go along through the atmosphere so it didn't account for the atmosphere at all so we might end up landing short at this rate I'm gonna hmm, I wonder if those altitudes and that pressure are good for Duna I forget because, you know, Mars and all are completely different. Well, uh, prediction is coming in closer, but it's not really closing the gap very quickly now. Yeah, the atmosphere is certainly not helping us as much as I would... Okay, the commutrons have broken off. Uh-oh. Uh, maybe I should slow down a bit. Because I'm worried now that the uh, main dishes will break off. And also we're going too far. I want to reserve at least 200 meters per second right now. The parachutes seem to be alright. They say they're alright. Do I trust them?
Well, we're pretty much over the right location, so I might as well trust them. Let's go for it. Well, okay. They're ready, I guess. Can't really lower the minimum pressure anymore, can we? I could take off when safe. Well, they're really not responding at all anyway. I guess we'll go with what we've got. No need for this anymore. At least the antennae are not breaking. Communication line should be fine. We're at four kilometers. Okay, we have drug shoot deploy. Three kilometers. Kind of turn smart ASS off and just have SAS on. Full drogue shoot deployment. Two kilometers. One kilometer and slowing down. Oh boy. Oh, we're not slowing down fast enough. Uh, okay. Whoop. No, no, no. Oh, that's not good. I can't see the ground. I can't see the ground. No, don't do this to me, Kerbal. Oh, you did it sideways again. Oh, man. No, the reaction wheel isn't powerful enough to write this up. No, no. This is just going to be how it is. We are sideways. Okay, well, you know, we're going to have to figure this out. No point uh, separating it right now. Uh, yeah. In the fullness of time, we will have to figure this out. For now, let me just extend that solar panel, that solar panel, that solar panel. We will not start the reactor yet. Uh, on the daylight side, it should recharge. It's got plenty of actual capacity for electric charge, but well, here we are. All right. Um, tell you what, we've got a lot of science from that probe. Let's go back to the space center and see how to spend it. After all, there's nothing like spending science to make you feel better after a little bit of a sideways landing. I think. And thankfully we've unlocked the last tier in the R&D building so that we can get these high level technologies and maybe these uh, these big rocket things would be nice. Then again I think it's nano lathing or metal materials that gives us the larger tanks. It doesn't look all that great. We've got some fancy engines here. and the vectors expensive though they are but we we will try to do more recoverable stuff with them for obvious reasons ooh prometheus fission reactor well that is expensive we probably don't want to launch too many of those hmm but is there something more useful That's a nice commutatron. Still has a dynamic pressure limit. This one doesn't. This one does not have a dynamic pressure limit. Gotta keep an eye on that so that we pick in 10 eye that aren't going to wreck themselves in an atmosphere. Advanced science tech though. That'll get us moving on all this stuff. And look at all the whirly jig nuclear reprocessors but especially of course we want the gravioli detector that's something oh and ore mining yes uh, it seems like we can't do carbonite on the surface of duna 
we're going to need to do ore mining. So let's just get this now. That has the converters, it has the drills, it has all the things. So, research. Okay, so we're all set to take advantage of the resources of Duna, more or less, I guess. Um, we don't have much of a sky here right now. Anyway, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.